Hello, my name is Shelley and welcome to another lesson on algebraic fractions. In our last lesson, we learned how to multiply fractions. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to divide algebraic fractions. Firstly, we must refresh your memories by revising some of the work we've already done on the division of fractions with numbers. Now, do you remember the rule that when we divide fractions, we flip the numbers over and multiply? Now, do you know why this rule works? Let me show you an example to explain it. What is 3 divided by 4 divided by 5 divided by 3? Let us write it as a fraction divided by a fraction. As a first step, let's focus on the denominator, 5 divided by 3. Now I'm going to create a 1 in the denominator. And to get this, I have to multiply the denominator by the reciprocal of 5 divided by 3. Now how do we find a reciprocal of a number? Well, all we need to do is swap around the numerator and the denominator of our fraction. We say we invert the fraction. Let me show you. The reciprocal of 5 divided by 3 is 3 divided by 5. Remember, a number multiplied by its reciprocal always gives an answer of 1. But I cannot simply multiply the denominator by the reciprocal. I will have to do the same to the numerator. And that means that I will multiply the whole fraction by 1. Remember, multiplying a number by 1 does not change the value of the number. This is the principle. Now, let me show you how it is used. First of all, we want to create a 1 in the denominator. So we look at the denominator in order to determine the reciprocal. As we have just seen, to find the reciprocal, you must invert the fraction. In this case, the reciprocal of the denominator is 3 divided by 5. So we multiply by 3 divided by 5. And we should see that this would equal 1. Now remember, whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator. So we multiply the numerator by the same number. Now if you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number, we are really multiplying it by 1. And the number does not change. Now let's look at what we have. We have... 3 divided by 4 multiplied by 3 divided by 5 all divided by 1 and this equals 3 divided by 4 multiplied by 3 divided by 5. So notice in this whole process I did not change the value of the original fraction. You can see now why we can flip over the denominator and multiply. So remember that even though the flipping over and multiplying rule sounds like a trick, it really is mathematically correct. Let's move on to some examples now where we see how this flipping over and multiplying rule can be applied to algebraic fractions. Simplify a divided by b multiplied by c. So what do we do here? There are no brackets, so we simply work from left to right. We first divide, then we multiply. Now because we're dealing with our flipping over and multiplying rule, let's create fractions. So it's a divided by 1, divided by b divided by 1, multiplied by c divided by 1. Now we're starting with our divide, and remember we're going to flip over and multiply. And it's always the one directly after the divide sign. So we write a divided by 1. Instead of divide, we now write multiplication sign. And then we flip it over and it becomes 1 divided by b. Multiplied by c divided by 1. And now we can simplify this. It becomes ac divided by b. So you see, for algebraic fractions, we use the same principle. Now have a look at this one. Simplify a divided by b multiplied by c. 
It is different from the last example, as these brackets tell us to divide A by the product of B and C. So we can write this as A divided by 1 divided by BC divided by 1. Now when we work this out, we would write A divided by 1. Now we're going to multiply and flip this around, so we're going to write 1 divided by BC. And when we simplify this, we get A divided by BC. These aren't difficult at all. Let's try the next example. Simplify A multiplied by B divided by C. Here there are no brackets, so we just work from left to right. So we write A divided by 1 multiplied by B divided by 1 divided by C divided by 1. Now, what we can say is, let's just rewrite this, A divided by 1 times B divided by 1. Now we multiply and we flip this around and we write 1 divided by C. And when we simplify this, we get AB divided by C. We have learnt about the flipping over and multiplying rule when it comes to dividing fractions. And we've also learned in previous lessons how to factorize and cancel factors. Now let's apply all this knowledge in this next example. Simplify 3n cubed divided by m squared divided by 6m cubed divided by m squared all multiplied by 18m to the power of 4 divided by n cubed. Now I know that brackets are always done first and this is division. So we are going to apply our multiply and flip over rule. So we write 3n cubed divided by m squared. Now we write our multiplication sign and we invert this fraction. So we write m squared divided by 6m cubed multiplied by 18m to the power of 4 divided by n cubed. And as you should notice, this is a simple multiplication sum where we cancel our factors, and you know how to do that. Now I'm going to move on to the next example. Simplify x squared minus 4x minus 21, all divided by x squared minus 9, divided by x minus 7, all divided by 3 minus x. Now, what is the first thing we do here? Well, here is our division sign. So let's begin with this rule. I'll flip over and multiply. So we write x squared minus 4x minus 21, all divided by x squared minus 9. Now we write multiplication sign and we flip this over so we write 3 minus x divided by x minus 7. Now let's see what else we can do in order to simplify this further. Look at this numerator here. Do you recognize what this is? Yes, it's a trinomial. It is a quadratic trinomial because the highest power has an x squared in it. We know how to factorize this, so let's factorize it on a new piece of paper. Here is our trinomial. Now remember, to factorize it, we write down our two brackets. Now what we are looking for is two numbers that multiply together to give us minus 21 and would add up to give us minus 4. Let's think of some of the factors. We'll start off with a minus 7 multiplied by a 3 because that gives us minus 21. We could have also said minus 3 multiplied by 7 because that also gives us minus 21. But let's check to see if they add up to give us minus 4. Now minus 7 plus 3 gives us minus 4. This seems like the correct option, but let's just show you how this one does not work. Minus 3 plus 7 gives us positive 4. No, we don't want a positive 4. So we therefore know we're going to write minus 7 and a positive 3. But remember, we first write our x in our first place in each bracket, because x multiplied by x gives us x squared. And then we write our minus 7 plus 3. Let's fill that into our fraction. 
So we have the factors x minus 7 and x plus 3. Now we're going to divide it by our denominator. Now what do we notice about our denominator? It's a difference of two squares. And we know how to factorize that. We put down our two brackets. And remember we're going to have a plus sign in the one bracket, a minus sign in the other bracket. We square root the first term so we get an x. And we write that in the first place in each bracket. And then the square root of 9 is 3. And that goes in the second place in each bracket. And now we multiply it by 3 minus x, all divided by x minus 7. Now what else can we do? Well, this fraction is in its simplest form. But I can put brackets around the terms in this fraction in order to create factors instead of terms. And this will help me to remember not to cancel the terms. And now we are ready to cancel our factors. Notice the x minus 7 cancels with this x minus 7. x plus 3 cancels with this x plus 3. And we are left with 3 minus x divided by x minus 3. These do not cancel out because 3 minus x is not the same as x minus 3. What can we do about this? Well, we know that we can change the sign. So we can take out the minus 1 from the bracket in the numerator. And this really means that we are multiplying it by minus 1 twice. So we write minus 1 multiplied by x minus 3. And that is all divided by x minus 3. And now notice we have our common factors which can cancel out. And we are not left with a 0, but instead we are left with a minus 1. So, we've had some good practice at simplifying fractions. Now try this one on your own. Simplify p squared plus 5p plus 6, all divided by 3p plus 9, divided by 4 minus p squared, all divided by 4 minus 2p. That's all for this lesson. We have learned how to divide fractions. Remember, division is the inverse operation of multiplication. So instead of dividing, we multiply by the reciprocal.